Welcome everybody to the Granny Cat channel. How you doing? Thanks for joining me. If you're here, you're probably very, very, very interested in growing your own tobacco. Something you may not have known you could even do. You think like, okay, uh, tobacco, I have, to, uh, I have to go to the store and buy a cigar. Or I have to spend 20 bucks on a pack of cigarettes. Right? Tired of spending 20 bucks on a pack of cigarettes. I want to grow my own tobacco. Right? And I want to grow good tobacco. So today, you are in the right place on the Granny Cat channel, a channel that we talk about mostly cats and, and, and finer uh, uh, aspects of living, like really, really good music. Uh, so, but, but if you're here, I know you're interested in growing tobacco. And by the end of this program, by the end of this hour, you are going to know so much about growing your own tobacco, you're going to say, why didn't I do it in the first place? I'm going to give you everything you need to know. I'm going to start with, I have a, uh, a, a slideshow prepared for you. And um, I have successfully grown my own tobacco. I'm going to, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you samples of that. I have tons and tons of tobacco. Actually, not tons, but I ended up with, uh, for the record, about five pounds of very, very high quality tobacco. And I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to give you a slideshow of everything I did. Because if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, you don't need to be an expert horticulturist. If you grow tomatoes, if you've ever grown tomatoes in your yard, if you've ever grown, uh, I don't know, like mint plants or, or uh, shrubs, anything, right? especially weeds, have you ever grown weeds in your yard? Have weeds ever grown involuntarily in your own yard? Probably. So if you could grow weeds, you can grow tobacco because tobacco is a weed. So again, by the time, by the end of this program, you're gonna, I'm going to show you everything from seed all the way, all the way to smoke. I was smoking our tobacco right now. Mmm. Oh, so good. Wow. Who would have known? Who would have known? And I'm not even a smoker. So if you're a cigarette smoker, you're going to love this. And uh, also, um, if you're a person interested in uh, growing your own cigars, <laughs> not growing your own cigars, but growing tobacco for cigars, this is also a video for you. However... I did not, I did, initially I wanted to grow uh, and roll my own tobaccos, but it turned out I wound up going more for a uh, cigar, uh, a, a pipe uh, mix, a pipe blend, uh, something that you could even roll with uh, cigarettes, roll with uh, cones or individual paper. So anyway, that's, uh, I'm going to show you a slideshow. I have my entire camera roll ready to go. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, you're going to see beautiful imagery of, of, uh, of the, the plants as they grow. And as I said, it's not hard to grow. Uh, I think the most challenging part of the process was the very beginning. Right? In the very beginning, when you start growing, when you, when you decide to grow tobacco, the first thing you have to do is pick the right seed. Right? Seed is everything. If you have good quality, provable seed that produces really good tobacco, the tobacco that you grow will be high quality and really good. If you get garbage seed or, you know, seed that isn't proven in some way, uh, uh, then uh, you, it's a, it's a crapshoot. So you're going to basically inve uh, invest an entire season uh, in growing tobacco. Tobacco starts to grow. I'm broadcasting, and I have grown in the northeast part of Pennsylvania, right? uh, the Scranton area. And as you can see down on my screen below, the current uh, uh, temperature outside is 24 degrees, uh, and it's December. Right, so my crop, I began in May, right? and the seedlings and, and, and harvesting and uh, getting the seeds going started in May. And by June, they were in the ground about three to five inches tall. And by October, 
uh, right up till Halloween, uh, they were still very, very vibrant, very, very resilient. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, and they had a mind of their own. They weren't, they're not very hard to, uh, uh, to grow. So, so that's where we're at right now. And uh, so, so as I said, this is the uh, Granny Cat channel. Kindly, while you're here, hit the subscribe button. It's right over here. And uh, hit the, if you're watching the video, hit the like button. Right? And, uh, and there's other videos here. It's mostly about Granny Cat. She's down below. And uh, it's her channel. My name is Marcus. I'll be your host today. And uh, you're going to, as I said, stand by, grab yourself a, a beverage, and, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know to grow amazing, amazing, high-quality tobacco right in your backyard for pennies on the dollar. Now, people say, well, you're only going to get five pounds. I could buy that in the store for, for, for $15 a pound. Why do I want to sweat in labor, you know, for less than $100? Uh, uh, I could buy my own. Well, you, first of all, you're not going to get this quality of tobacco. There's just no way you're going to get it. So, uh, so it's really, in terms of how much is your homegrown tobacco worth, uh, well, I, I don't think you're, you're, if your intention is to sell tobacco, this is probably the wrong video for you. But if, you're, if your intention is to enjoy it all year round, then why not get high quality, organically grown, no chemicals, no chemicals. I can tell you that this tobacco that I'm smoking right here that I grew in my own backyard is not the same quality as a cigarette that you buy in the store. It's, it's not the same, right? There's no, there's no, there's no harshness. There's no chemical. It doesn't burn like a like a like a bonfire. It's it's a different high quality. This is probably what the Indians were smoking. Remember the Indians, the Native Americans. They had rituals and they and they uh, they smoked their cigar. They smoked their tobacco. Uh, this is probably what they were smoking. Now, just as a, um, as I said earlier, the the. Uh, type of tobacco that we're growing, right, is universal. Now, when you start to cure it towards the end, you can decide if you want to make it cigar tobacco or cigarette tobacco or both, right? You, 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 the, choice, uh, the choice will come later, but first, you got to get it growing first. Once it's grown, then you could talk about curing and making it uh, into whatever you want to make. So, uh, so, so again, Granny Cat Channel, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and, uh, you know, and also on YouTube, you have uh, uh, so many videos, uh, I'll plug them all. Look at this, just in, in searching Grow Tobacco right here on YouTube, you find out How to Grow Tobacco, Part 1, Brooklyn Homegrown Tobacco, Modern Marbles, Easy Grow, How to Grow, 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 grow. Harvest, Ferment. Uh, those are the two things, uh, fermenting and aging, are beyond the scope of this video, uh, and that's what you do with cigars. You uh, ferment them a little bit and you age them, uh, but unfortunately that removes the nicotine in the tobacco. Uh, I bet you didn't know that about cigars. When you, when you ferment and age, uh, that's the point of fermenting and aging. You kind of decrease uh, the nicotine level. Right? But in this tobacco, we left the nicotine full force. <laughs> right? So, um, you know, and uh, that's, I, I, in my view, that's more of a, a natural way uh, that the plant uh, 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 grows. Right? Actually, the top of the plant, as you're going to see, is, is the highest quality, uh, highest concentration of nicotine. And as you go down the plant, the bigger fan leaves tend to be a little less. Uh, so let, let, let's uh, let's start here. Yeah, I want to do a little show and tell for you. A little show and tell for you. And, and um, I want to show you that I'm not I'm not making it up. Look what I got. Look at all this tobacco. I right, look at these leaves. Now these are again these were harvested. These are the tops. You can see the leaves are kind of uh, small, right? But I got I got bags of this stuff. Man, look at this. Look at this. I got. Look at this. I got. I got bags and bags and bags of, of uh, tobacco, adding, as I said, adding up to about five pounds. And, um, 
Over here, you see, I have uh, I have a, a, a different um, uh, approach uh, to the tobacco. This was uh, chopped down. These were uh, chopped into pieces, and um, you know, you take off the the stems and then you you, you chop it up. But I just want to show you that that this is uh, in, you know entirely possible and not a theory. Right? This this video is not a theory on how to grow tobacco. I did it right here. Right, and 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 if I could do it. Right? You could do it, too. It's not hard to do. I don't, you know, it's just you do it. All right, what else? I'll show you, I'll show you some. Um, oh, and, and, and you know what's really interesting, too? If you don't uh, uh, particularly have, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to smoke all this tobacco, look what you can do. You can make little Christmas gifts for people. Look what I did. Hey, what's up, dog? What's up, dog? Ah, a little dog, a little, a little treat bag for people for Christmas gifts. You know what kind of a great Christmas gift this makes? All right, fantastic, right? Hey, how you doing, man? You, you walk in, who's better than you? You got, you got uh, gift, gift packages of, of your tobacco. Hey, I heard you grow tobacco. Yeah, man, and I got some, I got some gifts for you right here. So, um, so gifting your tobacco is a great idea, too. And, um, and I'll show you some of the products you can make. Uh, I did grow, I did roll a, a, tobacco, a, a cigar or two. You can see some of the products that I grew and, um, uh, and made myself. Here is a, uh, here's a homegrown, a homegrown cigar. Isn't that amazing? Right? You can see the, home, the homegrownness of the, uh, the home hand-rolledness of the cigar. Right? Fantastic, right? It's, a, it's one leaf wrapped around a bunch of other leaves. And, and again, this is beyond the scope of this video uh, to show you how to roll cigars. There's plenty of videos on that that you can watch on your own. Here's a cone. Uh, uh, that was uh, that is packed with tobacco. The tobacco you grow, I could tell you, is going to be um, is going to be slightly less uh, flammable than the uh, stuff you buy uh, in the store, right? So it, it tends to smoke a little slower and such. All right, so let, let's just uh, let's jump right in, right? So uh, so here we go. Like I said, I'm going to give you a uh, I'm going to give you the full camera roll from May all the way to, to, to October, right when I got blasted by the last frost. I kept the plants in the whole time, right? And I kept cutting off the tops, which I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you about. I'm going to, I'm going to show you about seeds uh, and such. In fact, we should probably do that first. Picking the right seed. Let's, let's talk about that. Let me, let me back up one second, right? So, so let's talk about seed, right? So how, where did I get my seed? How did I start? Right? Well, I didn't, as I said, I didn't know anything about growing tobacco. And I, uh, I just said, okay, well, let me, let me try to get some seeds, right? And, and I went online, and I found this uh, wonderful uh, seed manufacturer. Their name is uh, True Leaf Market. Now, I'm sure there's many. Right? And, and, I, and I thumbed along here. I said, oh, I don't know. Which, what seeds should I buy? Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I wanted to grow, as I said, I wanted to grow um, uh, cigars. So uh, I bought a cigar mix, a cigar seed collection. Right? This is what I bought. I, I bought the cigar seed collection. Right, and there were three uh, packages of seeds. The two that I, harv I, I cultivated were these. I cultivated the um, Cuban Criollo Criolla, 98 tobacco. Now it says it it uh, uh, manifests or uh, 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 grows within 60 and 70 days. Pay no attention to that because it's more like 90 and 100 days. Right, and there's their information if you're interested. Uh, True Leaf. We love this company, True Leaf Market. I have no affiliation with them. I just uh, love, you know, I, I uh, stumbled on it. So again, Cuban Criollo, Criolla, and, and this other one that I grew, uh, which is uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. Connecticut Broadleaf, right? And there's the, uh, again, there's the information packed for 2022 season. And they were, um, they were just spectacular. So... So again, um, picking seed, just get good quality seed. Read the reviews of people that, that uh, uh, had seed. These are the two that I tried. They both grew amazingly. They got all mixed up. I don't know which was which, really. 
uh, in the final analysis because, I don't know, I just lost track of which was which. And, uh, but anyway, I, oh, I'll show you my seeds. Right? So, so that's the first year. In the first year, you'll, you'll, you can buy your own seed, right? But as the season goes on, look what you're going to get. All on your own. Look at all these seeds. This is like a million seeds right here, right? They grow on the top of the plant. It's easy, right? So these are, these are essentially uh, tobacco pods. You can see them, right? They're little, they're little um, it's a little pod, right? It's a little uh, brown pod, right? And you basically crack them open, right? You crack them open, and there's like a couple of hundred seeds in there, right? Right, you can see them. I'll show you right now. Right. You see the seeds? They're very small. Right? That's enough right there to start a whole garden. One little bud. Right? So so you buy your own seeds first, and then and then you do this. You get your own, right? You have your own seeds growing, right? So and they, and they stay forever. I'm told that uh, seeds can last five years. So what do I do? I have them. I keep them in a nice paper bag. I keep them down, you know, in the basement, in the curing room that I'm going to show you. And, uh, and, and that's the way I do it, you know. And, and so that's how I did it. And that's how next year, next year's crop will be all, all of my own seed. Uh, so, but, but to start off, this is a good way to do it. You head over to uh, one of these uh, distributors. I, again, I picked uh, True Leaf Market. Pick out some seeds. Read the reviews. It's all good, right? It's all, it's all good stuff, right? And uh, pick stuff that is uh, acclimable. <laughs> is that a word? Acclimable. Uh, pick seeds that grow well in your area, right? If it's cold, like here in Northeast Pennsylvania, pick seeds like... I picked one because it was Connecticut, and I figured, well, if it grows well in Connecticut, it'll grow well here. Now, I don't know if that was the right thinking, but it definitely worked. And I can tell you, these plants are strong. These plants want to grow. Once they get in the ground, you'll see, if you, if you hit them with the right fertilizer, which I want to tell you about, what are you going to put in the ground? Here's where you start. Black cow. Black cow is cow manure. Right? You grow in cow manure and whatever else you can throw into the ground. You could put, uh, hey, look, anything organic is essentially fertilizer. So you could put, uh, you know, your kitchen waste, your kitchen, you know, uh, uh, you know, parts of apples and oranges and pineapples and, and skins of this and banana peels and, and you know, uh, leftover pasta. Just throw it into the garden all year round. And when May rolls around, you mix that up. Boom, you mix it up into the dirt and, and a little black crow, right? A cow, <laughs> black crow, <laughs> the black crow. You put in black crow, cow, and, and, and that's all you need, right? So, so, uh, so there you go, man. So black cow. So let's start the, uh, let's start the slideshow, man. So, uh, so yeah, so there's, oh, I got I to gotta dedicate this show to uh, Batman. Uh, he's now down below. Batman is going to help us on this uh, granny cat tour of, of the tobacco field and the entire camera roll from this uh, grower. Uh, he's in every video. <laughs> Not in every video, but he's in a lot of them. And uh, unfortunately, Batman, in, in, in making this video, <sighs> passed away one week ago. And uh, he just took a heart attack, man, like a hero. He just he got up off the dinner table. He just finished eating. And, and he, he walked a couple of feet and took a heart attack and dropped dead on the kitchen floor. And uh, we love Batman. Batman was 14 years old, a black cat I found in Chinatown, New York City. And uh, we, love, we love Batman. So, uh, so Batman's going to show us. And what, what you're seeing in the video, uh, what you're seeing in the, in the image is uh, uh, a couple of seedlings. You see that they're, um, these are tobacco plants. This is probably already June and uh, and I'll show you more. Uh, again, they're not the the uh, images are not in exact chronological order, or maybe they are. I, I don't know. 
<laughs> but but it'll make sense as we go along. So so uh, let's go. So so yeah. So uh, take a take a comfortable seat and enjoy yourself. Don't rush the process. Right. You can see down below over here. These are the uh, uh, smallest starters. This is how I started the seeds. You take these, uh, you know, there's like a, three, six, nine per square. You fill them up with a high quality uh, potting mix. I used Miracle Grow. Uh, Miracle, Miracle Grow product. It's a potting mix. It's high quality. It's very light. Don't use regular dirt to start the seeds, right? What you do is you get your peed pots and you uh, put the dirt in there, kind of loose pack, don't pack it, and then you sprinkle the seeds on top. You don't have to do anything else. Just make sure that the dirt is already wet, right? Saturate the peed, peed pots, they're called. Saturate them with water, water them, let the water soak up until they're wet. And then you sprinkle the seeds on top. Now, you could start these indoors uh, on a windowsill, or if you have a, a lighting system and you want to get a one-month jump on the season, that is a very good idea, and I'll probably do that next year. But this year, I didn't do it because I didn't know what I was doing. I, and I just planted the seeds when it got warm out, and eventually they started to grow, and by June... Uh, you know, I started in early May, and by June, they were already ready to go in the ground, which left me most of June, July, August. That's three solid months of grow. And then I took advantage of it. I went well into September, that's four months, and most of October. So my grow season was four and a half months from this point, right? So... So there's Batman. I'm going to show you the areas by which I, I grew. Where Batman is sitting, over here by the black cat, was not tobacco. But this strip right here was tobacco. And I did something that's a little unusual. You could see my square, right? I, I actually had uh, four areas where I grew. But this is the main area. And I had eight plants growing there. Most plants are, when you start growing them, grow them two feet apart. Two feet, 24 inches apart, and nothing on either side, on, on the uh, outsides of the plant. Right, so, so two feet, that's all you got to do. Now, what I did was, because I'm lazy and I didn't know what to do with the sod, I grew directly onto a grassy area. So what I did was I flipped the grass over, right? I, I dug around, I dug a square, and then I took the sod and I flipped it over. Right? Because I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have anything else to do with it. I didn't want to pile it on the side somewhere. I figured I'd use it. And eventually that grass becomes fertilizer as the season goes on. So, so you carve your square and then you flip. You don't have to do this. Another way to do it is just simply remove the sod and pack it in with cow manure or any other fertilizer or high quality dirt. Right? You follow what I'm saying? What I did was I flipped the sods and then I cut a hole in the middle of the sod and I, I, I planted directly into the sod, right? You, but you go down a little bit, right? You go down, you know, a, 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 and then you, you add more uh, uh, cow manure into that hole and then you drop the plant in there. So, so two ways of doing it. One, you could just plant into dirt um, and, and that's good. Uh, or you can flip the sods. Now, there's actually a third way. You'll see a lot of people plant in containers. Now, I would, I would suggest not doing that because when you plant in containers, it's very high maintenance. You have to keep the plant fertilized. Um, the plants grow very tall, and they will blow over. I don't care if it's a, you know, a, a, a big uh, um, you know, construction bucket. Right? Maybe a garbage pail won't blow over, but uh, any bucket size, you're going to grow plants that are six and seven feet tall. The best place for a tall plant like that is in the ground. Don't, build, don't go into containers unless that's all you have. So, and then what you'll do is just keep them a little shorter, keep the tops, keep cutting them, and keep them only about four feet so they don't blow away. 
and you got to keep fertilizing them using, you know, blue water. Miracle Grow uh, makes a great product. Uh, but or or continue to to compost the uh, container, right? But but that's just that's not my suggestion. My suggestion is to grow in dirt, like I did it. All right. So here's more of um, uh, the starter plants. The plants over here, these are not tobacco. This is uh, uh, string beans. Uh, but these are the plants that I started. And you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, ten. 15, 20, maybe 18, maybe 18 plants right here that I started at one time, and then I added more seed, and I did it again, all of which became the final product, right? And you can see this little greenhouse I built right here for outside. It's basically a picture frame, a piece of glass over the peed pots. You see what I did? And, and you just add a little water to the bottom. They stay moist. And in the hot sun, they'll start to grow, right? Now, again, you could do that indoors with lights, but I did it outside. All of everything that I did was grown in the season outdoors uh, uh, starting in May, May in northeast Pennsylvania. Right? So we're still in May right here. And uh, you can see beautiful plants, right? They're, they're beautiful, easy to grow, right? So you're asking yourself, well, if you started with peat pots, how did they get into these pots? Well, when they start to grow a little bit, as I'll show you, you then transfer them into a bigger pot. Right? So you go from peat pots, when you see your little spring thing pop up, you then go into a, a, a slightly larger container. Right? And then from this container, this is what goes into the ground. Right? It'll make more sense as we go along. So this is the second uh, round of growing. These were seedlings that were placed into... Uh, Slightly larger pots, and um, you can see them coming up. So these are the peed pots. This is what they look like. And sometimes they grow two and three together in the same peed pot. Now, you could thin them out, or you can, if you're very slick, you can take a knife, pull the peed pot out, and, and cut them, and then you get two plants for one. It's a twofer, right? So instead of nine nine potential plants, you got like already like, like 12 or 13 or 15, right? So here's my square, right? And you can see I marked them off with little sticks. You see these little pieces of wood? And um, uh, they're two feet apart, right? And you can see how the flip sod after a little while starts to die. This is about a week. Uh, I let the sods die for about a week. And you're looking at the other side of the sod. Now, how did, I get the, how did I get the cow manure in there? What I did was I flipped the grass, I put the fertilizer in onto the ground, and then I put the sod back on it, right? You follow what I'm saying? So you flip your sod. If you're not using sod, if you just get rid of the sod, that's better. And then you put your fertilizer in. But what I did was I flipped the sod, I put the fertilizer in, and I put the sod back, when I was ready to grow the plant, I just, I just um, grew a little circle. Not grew, but I, I cut a circle with a knife. I'll show you the knife. I took, I took this thing right here, and I went like this, and I carved a little circle, a little circle, and that's where I planted into. So relax, as I said. Enjoy yourself, right? They're, they're plants, man. They, they love you, and you should love them. If you love your plants and you take care of them like you take care of your, your, your other uh, things that you love, uh, you're going to get a great result. So uh, kick back. Wear gloves, too. Wear gloves when you uh, handle tobacco, as I'll show you later. They get very sticky. So here's, a, here's an example of a peed pot that I, I plucked uh, from the, from the uh, series of nine. And you can see they're beautiful little plants. Uh, when you pull them out of the peed pot, let the peat pot dry a little bit so when you flip it, it's not mud, right? If it's a little drier, it'll come out in one piece, right, as you can see. And um, so, so there it is. There's a, a beautiful peat pot. And then that peat pot is what you stick into the, uh, into the slightly larger pots. Now, where are you going to get your pots? I don't know. These are things that I had laying around in my garage. You buy plants, you save your pots, and then you use the pots to grow something else. Right? Again, down here, this is not tobacco. This is 
uh, string beans. But uh, you could see what the tobacco plants look like. And they're going to get really big really soon. Oh, here's a ruler for you. Uh, this one says it's three and a half inches, three and a half inches off the dirt. We're ready to go into the ground. We're ready. We're ready. Here's Batman. Batman, Inspector Batman. He's uh, always have a, 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 an inspector. Batman knows a lot about tobacco. He's, uh, he's inspecting the plants. He's making sure the squirrels don't get at it. And, um, you know, he doesn't like string beans. He liked the tobacco. Blew out my lighter. That's my yard. And you can see it's, it's roughly June. You see how beautiful the, um, the, the uh, roses already are. Everything is full steam. Now, if I grew indoors, if I started the plants indoors, they would have already been in the ground, which is what I'm going to do next year, right, to get an extra month. Right. But here we go. So uh, I did have an irrigation system. Uh, you don't have to do this. I have water that comes off the top of my house, and I routed it using these plastic hoses right into the garden. Right, so every time it rained, the, the, not only did the plants get the rain, but they got a, 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 you know, a flood of extra water. Now, there's a lot of theories online that says don't overwater your tobacco and don't overfertilize your tobacco. They don't like that. Don't listen to that. They like water. They like water, not in the beginning, but as they grow. When they get like two feet, they love water. Water them, and if, they, if you're giving them too much water, they'll tell you. They'll tell you. They won't be straight up. They'll, they'll, if you know anything about plants, you'll see that you're overwatering. But I never, in my experience, I never, it was a very dry year, too, uh, uh, to, just as a point. This year in northeast Pennsylvania was a very dry season. So I watered almost every day. I, I have a hose, and I hose them down. Right? So, you know, you're watering your plants. Look, that's the bare minimum. The bare maintenance is water. Water is life. Give the plants, once you fertilize them properly, you don't have to do that again. But you got to water them. That's the whole thing. The more water, the better. So here you see they're roughly uh, five to six inch plants uh, now in the gra ground. Uh, they're, they're below the sod. Right? I, I cut the hole out of the sod and they're in there. And uh, growing nicely. There we go. Here we go. Look, dandelions. Everything's growing. Pow, zoom. I'll show you about this. Um, there's two bugs that you have to worry about. There's only two pests when it comes to tobacco. One is a little black bug that ha is unconsequential. It's inconsequential to the plant. It doesn't hurt the plant. So that particular black bug, when I get to the, the, the video, uh, when I get to the photos of that black bug, I'll show you what it is. You don't have to worry about that. The other bug is a caterpillar, right? It's a green caterpillar that will eat your whole plant unless you get it first, right? I'll show you what the caterpillar looks like. Um, you, you, they're not, <clears throat> it's not an uh, infestation of caterpillars, green caterpillars. But they're there. And you, when you see a plant being eaten, uh, you know that it's the caterpillar because that's the only bug that likes it. The rest of the bugs stay away. The bees, they come by and, you know, and, and, and such. But uh, I'll show you that uh, when we get to it. So uh, here we go. Here's another spot. I had six other plants growing in another spot. And these are grown without the flip sod idea. This is just dirt. And I spaced them out about two feet. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't like this spot as much because the plants got very crowded. Uh, I didn't realize how big they were going to grow. And you could see already. We're not even in, I think, maybe early July. And you got monster, already monster leaves growing. Right? Very easy to grow. The only thing you do, fertilizer and then add water. Right? Beautiful, very, very green um, I, I would actually say uh, tobacco, it's not, it doesn't grow green like, um, like uh, uh, grass. It grows more like a limeish. They're kind of like a limey green, right? right? And you can see they got, they've already gotten a head start on the grass and the weeds. 
there's no problem anymore. Here's some night shots. I don't know. You know, you get a little carried away when, you, when you're growing. And you could see the spot on the side, right, how fast they grew. They got really big really fast. And six plants in this little area started to crowd it. But, again, the, the quality of the product was, I mean, amazing. All right, so, so there you go. There's other plants growing around it. And now you can see we're, we're getting into the uh, budding, or already into the budding stage. All of your plants will produce seed if you let them. Every single tobacco plant will automatically start to flower and grow and, and self-pollinate into seed. All of them. So you don't want that to happen. You only want it to happen on a few plants. Of the 20 plants that I grew, I allowed three of the, uh, three of the 20 to flower. And that's where I got my seed. Right? So three of my plants were allowed to flower. And the other ones, what did I do with them? I went out there with a scissor. Right? This becomes your best friend when you're doing this. Right? You go out there and simply cut off the top of the flower. Just cut it off. And that forces the plant to grow more leaves. Now, it'll start to try to flower again, and that's, that's pretty much the only real maintenance throughout the year besides watering, which is removing the flowers as they start to grow. Because as you'll see, the top of the plant is the most potent and most desirable for smoking. All right, so here we are. I'm going to get to all of the curing. Uh, uh, you're going to see how it, how it starts to brown, how I start to harvest, um, but just enjoy the, uh, the sights and sounds right now. You can, see, you can see that we're probably already in June right now. The roses are starting to fall, and the tobacco plants just are going, man. Go, 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 right? Go, go, go. Here's another one trying to flower, and, um, and you'll see which ones I allowed to flower, but beautiful, easy to grow. I didn't know what I was doing, uh, I do know how to grow tomatoes uh, and such and, um, and other things. I grew a lot of mint, too. I grew a lot of mint. Um, what did I want to show you? Let's take a, let's take a short break. I want to show you uh, also. Let's just uh, stop right there. I wanted to show you some other things. Right? Let's have a little show and tell, a little show and tell. So um, what are you going to smoke your tobacco in? <laughs> There's an intermission on the Granny Channel. Smoking your tobacco. Right. It's an interesting pipe. It's a uh, clay pipe. Um, I don't know. I got it for two dollars a, at a flea market. It was unsmoked, and uh, I kind of like that. But here's my favorite pipes. Right. I like corn cob. You see me puffing on a um, a small. Uh, it's called a shortstop by M uh, Missouri Merchant, a, a company out in Missouri, and it's a corn cob, as you can see. I, and I have these two other ones right here. These are corn cob pipes. Um, this being my favorite right here. This is a uh, country gentleman, right, or a, a Carolina gentleman. I don't know what what kind of gentleman it is, but but uh, Missouri merchant. There it is. Look, check it out, man. I'll give you the I'll give you the made in Washington, Missouri, made in America, Cornell deal, la, 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 la. Missouri merchant, Missouri merchant is the uh, corn cob pipes that uh, we have. And, uh, you know what I mean? So, so uh, where, where were we? Oh, yeah, well, we were watching a video. Let's watch the video. So here's some, some uh, footage of the, uh, of the plants, right? Become very intimate with your plants. You know, they become like friends, you know? Here's Batman. Batman, Batman, we love you, Batman. And uh, here's, here's the wind. Let's talk about the wind. Now, uh, I did find that tobacco was uh, a little vulnerable to wind, strong wind, like here in the, you know, in the higher altitude of Pennsylvania. Uh, when the wind whips, uh, plants will buckle. So uh, I don't really know the solution to that, um, uh, other than I did use some sticks, and I tried to hold them up with sticks so they didn't blow. The casualty of all 20 or 30, whatever, 21 plants was only one. Only one got zapped by the wind. Right? It, got, it got knocked over. And um, actually two. 
right? And and uh, it, it wasn't that big of a deal, you know. You you uh, you immediately hang the plant up and you get something out of it, All right? But here you see the flowering. Uh, this is preliminary flowering. This is still green, and you can see that the um, that the um, buds are starting to come out. Here's a here's a very strong rainy day, right? Right now it's July. It's nice out, and you can see the plants whipping in the rain. Now, this is a day that I thought I was going to lose some plants, and I did. I lost one plant in the rain. Uh, you can see how they're bending and whipping. My point is with the containers, if you have plants in containers, they are going to blow away. Right? You want them in the dirt. Right? So that's one of the elements you'll have to deal with. These are some night nice shots of the flowers. We'll get more as we go on. Um, and they survived. They all survived. You can see I got another crop down on the end over there. I had a, three or four plants down on the end of the garden as well. And you can see the texture of the plant. Beautiful, right? Beautiful green. Right? Right? No bugs, no insects. Nothing likes, nothing, nothing really likes, no bugs really like tobacco other than that one caterpillar. Right? You can see a, a couple of other plants down on the end. Mmm. I smoke you, plant. <laughs> I never thought, I'll be honest, I never thought I would get to, when I started it, I didn't think I would get to a finished product at all. I, I thought that it would be too hard, it wouldn't be any good. But it turns out it wasn't hard, and it's very good. So there's an example of the flowering. You see how beautiful they are, even if you just like to have beautiful plants in your yard. Beautiful plants. And each flower becomes a pod, a seed pod. Again, each flower becomes a seed pod. And they turn brown, and then you just pick them off or cut them off with your trusty scissor. And... Um, and you'll get, uh, you'll get uh, all the seed you want forever. They can last five years, you know. And, and, uh, tobacco itself, by the way. I have all this tobacco, all these bags of tobacco. And uh, if you, if you um, store them correctly, it could last, you know, years, literally. Like, you know, some cigars are 50 years old. Uh, it really depends on how you, um, how you store the tobacco in the end. And again, that's a little beyond the scope of this video. Uh, this is more about growing. Because if you can't grow it, don't worry about curing it. Everybody's worried, well, well how am I going to cure it? How am I going to hang it? Uh, worry about that when you get to it. Right? First, you've got to grow it, and you've got to grow it well. Here you can see the grass is starting to come up because that wasn't sod, and the grass is eager to get up because there's nothing, there's nothing interfering. So if you grow in sod, you'll have less weed, weeds, uh, if you grow in dirt, the weeds are going to get, you know, get a head start. Uh, <clears throat> so this is my other area. It's behind the fence. Just a, uh, an area that I would have never grown anything. I said, yeah, I'll put four plants there, and they all grew spectacularly, right? Uh, so we're about halfway up the, uh, we're about halfway up at, uh, at this point. Uh, plants are going to double in size. Look at them. Here we go. Here we go. We're probably already in July, late July, and you can see the plants. Oh, here he is. Here's the, the uh, here's the uh, gardener. Is going to uh, show you. Um, uh, you can see how big they are. Uh, I'm I'm five foot eleven, and the plant is about my height right now. It got a little higher. They got up to about seven feet, and um, and you can see you can see you just got to go around, look at your plants, look for bugs. Uh, enjoy yourself. You know, when you touch the plants, you're going to get a very sticky, they're sticky, right? And if you keep touching them, you're going to, your hands are going to constantly be sticky. So uh, a, a workaround for that is wear gloves. Get a pair of gloves that you wear just for that. Uh, or use latex gloves and when you, when you handle them, <laughs> kiss your plants. They like that. Uh, breathe on, talk to your plants. Hello, plant. Hello, plant. I love you. Hello, plant. I love you. Right? So, so. Um, oh, here's some other things that were growing in the yard. Um, 
And as I said, uh, look, this is this is how big the tomatoes are already. If you want to compare, how big how big is my tobacco? Is it getting a is it growing right? Um, well, use other plants as a measure. Look, I've, I've already gotten uh, tomatoes. That's parsley. You got oregano, uh, basil. Uh, that's uh, rosemary, and this is mint, which I want to talk about. I like to grow mint, right? And why do I like to grow mint? Because many people don't know that you can smoke mint. And here you have, uh, there's, there's actually five varieties of mint growing in this garden. There's uh, conventional mint, chocolate mint, orange mint, spearmint, uh, uh, peppermint. Right? right now I'm drinking tea from this harvest, and it's uh, dried leaves and... Delicious homegrown mint, if you don't feel like smoking it. And you get a lot. Look at this. I got a whole mason jar. I got about three of these packed with mint. All right, so as, as a side note, um, uh, as my blueberry tree. What else can I show you? Oh, I'm going to show you the, uh, I'll show you my paintbrush. You're going to ask yourself, what's the paintbrush for? Why does the grower have a paintbrush for his tobacco plants? Well, I'm going to show you. Everybody should have a paintbrush. You go out and you buy a $1.99 paintbrush, right? And this is how you brush away the bugs. You get rid of the bugs. Uh, so here's, um, here's more. Um, more plants. Ah, here's, here's, uh, here's the girlfriend. Here's the girlfriend. She's uh, showing you how tall they are, and she's, she's a little shorter than me. And you could see how big the plants are in comparison to the cat. Right? Batman tells you how big the cat, how big the plants are. And so does the girlfriend. Right? So there you go, right? So uh, so you know, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of room. You're in the you're in the yard and you're enjoying your plants. And um, <clears throat> why not, man? You know, why not? Why not grow your own tobacco? Right? Oh, thank you, girlfriend. Thank you, girlfriend. She's telling us how big it is. There's some night shots, night shots, night shots. Uh, beautiful plants, even at night. Even at night. <laughs> night photography. Night photography, man. All right, so here they are really, really taking off now. Plants are really taking off in my backyard. Uh, about seven feet now, six feet, seven feet. You can see that they're outpacing everything at this point. Right? Like a big-ass weed. Because right? that's what they are, the weeds. Right? They grow like weeds. Um, yeah, man. So uh, there's a little plant by itself. This plant didn't do so well. It was a runt. And I said, eh, I'm not going to deny the runt, a smaller plant, from allowing it to grow. So I, I planted it anyway. Batman break. It's a Batman break. Smoke break. It's Batman we love Batman. Right? We love Batman. Batman, I love you. Uh, Batman didn't make it to the end of the season, man. Batman, why did you eat? Why did you eat the pork? Why? Why did you leave us, Batman? I'm smoking to the memory of Batman. Uh, we love Batman. I think Batman loved me, too. Love your plants like you love your cat, and you're going to get great product. Right? Right. Oh, Batman. Batman, you're a hero. You're a hero, Batman. We love you. <laughs> That's what we do on the Granny Cat Channel. We talk about cats. We talk about fine, we talk about fine music. And we talk about all of those other things that are great in life besides yelling and screaming at each other about politics and who's on the left and who's on the right. Who cares? We're all in the middle right now. We're all in the middle. Me, you, and Batman. So we love Batman. And uh, Batman was, um, he kept the squirrels away. I don't know if there were other creatures that wanted to eat the plants that Batman kept away. But I know... Um, the squirrels didn't get too close when it uh, came when, when Batman was around. 
So here we go. We're going to start with the, a little bit of the harvesting now. And you can see this is, as, this is one of the plants that got blown away by the wind. Um, and so I immediately hung it up. Uh, and so there it is. It's a dirt floor basement, uh, dark, no windows, right? It was ideal, right? You have to use what you have to dry out your plants. Now, you could remove each leaf, as I'm going to show you, and tie them together. That's one way of going. Or you can hang the whole plant upside down. I did a little of both. In the beginning, I hung just the leaves. I'll get well, more on that in a second uh, as we uh, move on through the camera roll. Um, all right, that's all we had at this point. So, so let's go back outside. And you could see the, um, the uh, 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 flowers, uh, which will attract hummingbirds. Hummingbirds love them. You'll see the hummingbirds come by. And uh, it's uh, uh, alleged that the hummingbird is what brings the caterpillar. You say, well, how did this green caterpillar get into the, into, the, uh, into the tobacco garden? Well, suspect is the hummingbird. Now, we're not going to bash the hummingbird. We're going to let the hummingbird do what, do what it wants because they're instrumental in, in pollinating the plant. They go from leaf to leaf and from flower to flower, and they pollinate. So let them do what they're going to do. Let everything just happen with the exception of the caterpillar. Here's a cigar I rolled pre-season. Pre right? I had some stuff laying around. And, oh, I'll show you about cigar. Um, here's a, here's a, um, a product by, I don't know who makes it. We'll find out in a second. But uh, how, do you glue a, how do you glue a cigar? You use this stuff right here. It's called gum arabic cigar glue. You can buy it on Amazon. I don't know. It was like 10 bucks. Two ounces for 10 bucks. It's... It's like a, uh, a glue. It is a glue. And you just add a little water, right? You add a little water in like a bottle cap, and you make yourself some, some glue, right? So when you roll the plant, you could use this to, to uh, glue the plant. You glue the, the, the wrapper leaf around the uh, center. Again, beyond the scope of this video, but you can do it, and I did do it a little bit. I found that it wasn't what I was after. I was more after the fine ground uh, tobacco, which is right here. I'll show you that. You say to yourself, "How do you get to? How do you get to fine, you know, fine uh, tobacco?" So here we go. Here's some crushed leaves, right? And here's my trusted scissor. Now, there's other ways of doing this. You could probably get a food processor, but this is how I did it. This is how I do it, right? Just get some leaves in there, pick out a couple of select leaves, and take your scissor in a jar and just do a little chopping. Can you hear it? You hear how it, what it sounds like? Right? And you can see it sticks a little bit to the, um, sticks a little bit to the scissors because it's still a little moist, right? And that's basically it. You get this, you know, this incredible fine ground, you know, fine ground tobacco. Right? This is a little bit of both. This is tops and um, and mid and lower leaves all mixed together. All right, so there's a cigar I rolled and uh, I still haven't smoked it. I just showed it to you earlier. It's in the um, it's in a jar waiting to be smoked. Um, what else we got? All right, let's keep going, man. Let's keep going. So uh, there it is. Uh, we're probably now in August, uh, July, August, probably like, you know, 35, 40, 50 days into the process. Um, you know, they're not seedlings anymore. They're giant weeds, giant plants. Uh, no, no real harvest at this point. Um, so what are you looking for? When do you cut them down? Well, they'll let you know. Here's a caterpillar. Here's a, uh, uh, a praying mantis that was hanging out on the, on the leaf. And um, uh, no harm to you. They eat other bugs. They're out there shopping like you are. So you leave the praying mantises alone. You leave all the bugs alone except for the caterpillar. Right. Uh, there's Batman digging a hole behind the plants. Batman fertilizing. Right? 
Batman is in this plant because, because that's where the cat was doing his business, in the plant. Right, Batman? You're famous, Batman. Uh, so enjoy yourself. Lounge, relax. And here you see more of the uh, flowering starting to occur. As I said, you get a lot of seed. This is one plant that produces all of these seeds. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't run out and, and buy some seed. I'll have some seed available. I don't, uh, check the link in the, in the video, and maybe I'll, I'll put some out there uh, on eBay. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. But, um, but anyway, so here's, here's the, um, the alternative to growing your own seed. Uh, well, you, you want to grow your own seed, but to start off, you don't have any seed, so you need to buy it, right? And um, so there it is. Uh, some of them, you could see all the flowers are gone, and you could see some of the pods are now turning brown. And that's what you're looking for. When they turn brown, completely brown, leave them on there until they're completely brown and, and almost dry to the touch. Right? They get, like, dry to the touch. What was that? Oh, wait a second. Before we do that, I want to show you this. I think there was more to it. A lot of this video I'm watching for the first time with you. Um, so here is the caterpillar. Here he is. Here's the caterpillar. Get out your long nose pliers when you see it. I know the video is a little blurry, but you'll see it in a second. There it is. So you, 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 they're not hard to, to locate. There they are. Look how big he is. It's a giant caterpillar eating your plant. So take out your long nose pliers. When you see them, they are the enemy. I'm sorry. I don't like to, if, you don't like, if you don't like seeing bugs die or anything die, then, then turn away for a second. But this bug will eat your entire plant. Right? So it's either them or us. Right? So there's the, there's the uh, caterpillar. You now know what it looks like. I don't want to show you mutilating the... <laughs> Show me mutilating the, uh, the, the, the bug. So more and more is piling up in the yard. How do you, in the basement, you basically take three or four leaves, very easy. You take, when you have dried leaves that are starting to turn, you see over here, they're still a little green, but they're starting to turn yellow. So when they snap off, when you go to a leaf on the bottom and, and you, you wiggle it a little bit, it'll just snap right off. Right? And then you know they're ready. Right? So you take like four or five of those, get a rubber band, right? get a rubber band, and just rubber band the five together. And what I used was pipe cleaners. You could see the pipe cleaners on the top um, inside of the rubber band, and they're just hanging there. I put up clothesline in my yard, in my basement, uh, or whatever was hanging there. Sometimes there's nails in your basement. Whatever grow strategy you have to hang uh, figure it out, right? And, and uh, as I said, here I used, uh, I tied the, the leaves with rubber band and I hung them using pipe cleaners. And it worked out spectacularly, uh, amazingly. And you can see as the days go by, they get, they get uh, darker and darker. How long does it take to dry out leaves? Anywhere from three days to two weeks. They should be, you know, pretty much brown, golden brown. Uh, some of the top leaves can take, you know, six weeks, um, uh, eight weeks, not, not eight weeks. They, they took about, some of them took about four weeks, uh, the very tops that were very green. Um, and uh, I just got some of those. Oh, in fact, I could show you that right now. Right. So this is the absolute, um, as you watch the birds, <laughs> Um, this is the absolute last harvest right here. And you can see there's some top leaves in there. They're getting a little dry now. Um, and I'll probably make a, um, I'll probably make a mix out of, out of both of these. Right. Right. Oh, there's a subject I wanted to talk about, sucker leaves. You're going to hear a lot about sucker leaves. Right. Um, it has been my experience that don't really pay attention to sucker leaves because... It doesn't matter. Now, sucker leaves are leaves that grow out of the armpit of each leaf. You'll see another round of growth coming out of the, 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 the uh, junction between the stem and the leaf, right? 
if you see them and you have too much leaf already, you just pick them out. But it is my experience that even the sucker leaves are smokable. That's what I just showed you. A lot of that is arguably sucker leaf, but it all becomes good in the end. So we're still down in the basement. The drying has begun. Four or five leaves tied together with a rubber band hanging on a clothesline with pipe cleaners. Right? Look, the more space you put between each leaf, the better. So if you only did two or three leaves and you got the time, that's actually better than putting four and five together. Right? I did have a little problem. If you stuff the leaves together while they're driving, drying, you might get a little mildew. Uh, I did because I'm growing in a dark basement, a damp, dirt floor, brick wall basement. Uh, and I got a little uh, mildew. So next year what I'll do is, um, this is a, another wild plant. This was a gourd that, gourds that grew. There's the girlfriend behind the plant. I don't want to exploit the girlfriend right now. Uh, so there they are. You see them shimmying a little bit. They're moving. Why are the plants, why are the hanging plants moving? Because I got a little fan going every once in a while. And you can see it's a little lighter down there because I got the door open. I was just airing out the plants every once in a while for a few minutes, creating a little uh, change in atmosphere. So a little a light fan bzzz, buzzing in the background. Right? You can see uh, plants in the back are already brown. These just came in uh, probably the same day that you're seeing them hanging. There's the fan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now you're going to start to see, as I was taking off the lower leaves, you go around, oh, these leaves are starting to turn brown. So you, you clip them off. You take them off, and you, you begin to hang. And you see that the plants, not these, because these were uh, plants that started late. I, they started, I, I, I actually grow and it grew, I told you, I grew some and then I added, I grew more seed, and those grew. So some of these plants are about three weeks behind the others. <clears throat> these plants right here are three, week, three weeks behind the main plants. But you can see how they start, as, as, the, um, as the season goes on, you start to get uh, just the tops of the plants. And they're already, you could harvest these right now. I elected to let them go all the way to the end. Because this is the prime... This is the cream of the crop right here, right? This is the real stuff right here, right? right. So here you go, man. There's some, some really good leaf. And we're getting to the bugs. We are getting to the bugs. Right. Here's more, more drying downstairs, hanging. Hanging. Look at that quality. Look how quality, right? right. Beautiful, right? Easy. I didn't do anything, right? All I did was tie them together and hang them. Right? Amazing stuff, man. Amazing. Amazing. Right? Oh, here's the... Uh, <laughs> even at this point, you're already smoking. <laughs> Has my pipe smoking. La, 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 la. Enjoy your plants, man. Enjoy, your, enjoy yourself. Pick up, pull a chair out. Pull out a chair. All right, so here's the bugs. And right here, it tells you we're, we're approaching Halloween. All right, so you can start to see the little black bug. Um, there's a little black bug that loves the top of the plant that I'm going to show you when we get to it. But here they are. Here's the, here's the tops really, really starting to reach for the sky because there's no flowers. They were cut. They were all cut off. The flowers are not allowed to grow here. Only on one plant, and those are already done. Right. That fence is probably about seven feet. Right? You can see them already growing. And there you go. All the way late in the season, they're still trying to flower. Just cut it off. Cut off the top. Leave the leaves cut. Leave the leaves. Cut the flat. Cut the, the bud. Leave the leaves. Cut the bud. Right. 
You can see how wild uh, this one area grew. It's just, it's just like monster plants blocking the window. These are like seven, eight feet already. Okay, so here's the bug, right? And that's what, the, um, that's what this is for, right? You get your, your um, you, you can leave them. Leave them. What I did was I left them to the end because they're of no harm to the plant. Now, you don't want them to dry out because dry out while you're drying the plant because then you're going to be smoking bugs, right? But when the plant comes off and the leaves come off, you just do this. You just, you brush them off as they dry and they'll fall off on the ground. And here you go, harvesting leaves. Harvesting leaves. <laughs> look at this, look at this wacko. What's he going to tell you about? I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about, but it's irrelevant at this point. Oh, I'm showing you the uh, wrapping of the plants. You could see uh, how I was, I was sorting them out. I left the bugs on. I'll get them later. And um, I, I, was, I was sorting them out in terms of size so that when I tie them together, they're kind of all the same. And these are, these are quality. These are middle of the plant, higher plant. Uh, still quite green, but uh, this is what happens to your hands too. Look at the look at the um, when you handle tobacco. This is what will happen. Uh, you get this very very sticky, you know, your hands will get all sticky, and then you got to go soap them up and scrub it off. Right? If you don't want that to happen, wear gloves. All right? I kind of enjoyed it. Some people say if you do it, you'll get a headache. I never did. Um, so more, more plants hanging. La, 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 more plants are hanging. Uh, you can see some of the tips of the plants. I'm starting to harvest them, they're, and they're coming in now as well. Uh, so sorting out the leaves as they turn color, tying them together, hanging them. And there's the bug, right? As I said, it is an infestation of these little black bugs. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they're called. But I did find out that they're of no harm to the plant, so just let them be. Let them be. They're ugly and they're nasty and they look like they're hurting the plant, but they're not at all. That's my pancake. That's my pancake at night, right? So here's my table full of dried leaves, uh, of which if you're into cigars at this point, um, you would start to uh, bring these into a cigar curing process, which we're not going to talk about. Uh, there's Batman towards the end of the season. Um, and you can see most of it is gone already. Most of it has already been harvested, except, and you can see how, how top heavy the plant gets. And that's all premium right there. That's the good stuff. Um, they say that the nicotine in the top of the plant is about 3%, as opposed to the nicotine in the bottom of the plant, which is about 1%. So, so, uh, so we're approaching the end. Now, I went right to the frost. I was planning to leave the plants out there for a while, and then this happened. I got whacked on the last, on, on a frosty day when it went below 32 degrees, right? And so that day, you could see how everything is getting hit. Um, when it warmed up, I, I said, okay, I made the decision to harvest everything. And here you could see, I went from one plant to the other, and I started to cut them down. I'll show you how I did it. Uh, very easy. Here's a hand. You know, it's just a hand clipper. And uh, I'll show you how, you know, so very easy, not a lot of pressure. Boom, and it comes right off. All right. So that's how you cut them. And then this is what you're going to hang upside down. You just take that and go hang it somewhere. And you're going to get premium, you know, premium leave. And that, that's what it looks like when it's hanging downstairs. All right. Here's all the tops now, all hanging downstairs. The other stuff I already removed from the hanging room, right? That's already uh, in the next, you know, in the next stage of, uh, of, of growing, right? Right? <laughs> and that's what tobacco looks like after you harvested it all. It's just stalks. It's very sad to see your plants uh, in such condition, but they're not plants anymore. They, they serve their, their, their point. They did, their, they did their job, and now you start pulling them up piece by piece, right? You pull them, pull them out of the ground until there's nothing left, and you're done, right? You're done. See you next year. 
Here's what the um, here's what the plants uh, look like as they start to dry out. You could see very very high quality leaves starting to uh, uh, you know dry out, and once they get where they're you know where they're kind of bendable and moist, that's when you you know or not as moist, uh, that's when you, you you pull them off right. So so there you go, man. You got everything you need to know. You you got you got it all, man. How to grow high-quality tobacco, and again, it's high-quality. Get the right seed, and you'll have high-quality uh, tobacco grown in your own yard for pennies, pennies on the dollar, right? So, so thank you very much for joining me. Please, pretty please, with sugar, subscribe, like the channel, and there's a lot more to come, and um, a lot more to come as, as time goes on. I'll take you out. I'll let, I'll let Batman take, I'll let Granny Cat take us out. Granny Cat. Granny Cat, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Batman. Granny Cat goes. <laughs>